Hey guys, how you doing? I don't think I have to introduce you to Bob, the Junk Pile Arch Top Guitar. You've seen this one before in an episode we did recently about using an Arizona, which is a theme of this guitar, an Arizona license plate with saguaro cactus on it to make this cool headstock cover. Now, in today's episode, we're going to carry on with the theme of using license plates. We're going to use Wheaties uh, license plates for bicycles, and um, I've already put one on here. I'm going to show you how I did this to make the surround for a pickup that come off of a 1965 K guitar, because that's what we put on here. This is a kit, you all know that. But we're making some modifications both in the way the guitar looks and the hardware it's equipped with. This is the sound we want. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a pick guard out of an Arizona license plate. So when we hit the bench, we're going to do that. And we're also going to use a piece of a license plate. We're going to put dual pickups or dual input jacks on this guitar. And we're going to use a piece of license plate to reinforce what we're going to do there and add some color and character to the guitar. So that said, let's hit the bench. Another little short info clip here as we move ahead with Bob Junk Pile Arch Top. Now, I want to use a pickup out of a 1965K um, called a Kleenex box, a Hershey bar, a whatever you want to call it, um, pancake, yeah, people call it that. Anyway, it is a different size than the hole here, so I'm going to make a surround out of a 1954 Wheaties license plate, this one from Arizona, Grand Canyon State, and I'm going to use that for a pickup surround. Now, much of the dismay of metric hater, I have used a metric ruler to find the center of all of these things, because face it, I don't want to bother with 7 and 60, 63 and a 34 thousandth when I can just say half of 72 is 36 and there's the mark. Sorry, metric hater, it's part of life. Anyway, I'm going to line all this stuff up. I'm going to drill holes, use an all first drill holes, mount this to the body, and then we're going to put the pickup mounting right through here in a place where it says... Arizona Grand Canyon State. We may have to shim this up a little bit and we would use cork paper to do that. That's enough proprietary information. That's all I'm going to give you people. All right, there you go. Wasn't that spiffy? Now what we're going to do 
is we're going to move into using one of these license plates to replace the kit pit guard so we can go along with a theme there. We're going to make it a little bit different size, a little bit different shape. But let's start by figuring out how to transfer this pattern onto this license plate. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is get a flat surface here. Put a couple of these rags on the top here because the top of the guitar is convex, right? You see my sticker, isn't that cool? Yeah, we can just do that like that. And what we are going to do is we're going to take this pit guard that came with the kit and we are going to trace it out on here with a pencil which I have already done you see that now in the event that we want to make this a tad bigger let me show you a little trick so the first thing we're going to do is get a straight side to work off of like so and we're going to try to figure out how much bigger do we want this than this one so let's do this I'm going to start over here that gives me more work area there we go and I'm going to make sure that that edge is pinned down good then I'm going to take a washer this washer is off of a guitar tuner I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to put it right here like so and I'm just going to go around and use the washer to follow the edge of the pit guard and you can see that the washer makes the line bigger in the amount of the width of the washer right there so we can try that then what we do is just a matter of cutting out the shape and we can kind of stay outside the line equidistant from the line while we're cutting this out with chick flick teal scissors of course we want to keep up the technical aspects of the project anyway we just cut around that line equidistant out this is where you paying attention in second grade came in really handy I can't help it if you didn't anyway there we go that one's just a tad bigger than the stock pit guard you got to do now is bring that back line it up like so and then we're going to try to estimate where the actual pickup is going to be and then we're going to relate that to what part of the license plate we want to show on the pit guard okay before we get rolling here you want to remember that if it's a right-handed guitar this is going to be the top of it so the audience seeing it they would read it like this not like this it would appear to be upside down to them unless you want that uh, next thing to remember is the whole purpose of a pit guard is that you're protecting the body so you want to remember everybody's strumming down people that strum I don't know aggressively violently that's why they have pit guards they don't want uh, the top of the guitar to get all trashed is kind of kind of the idea so when you're going down like this you want to remember this part of the license plate can be very sharp but if you look there's a ridge right here you see that now if I were to cut this license plate to where this ridge was the first thing that hit coming this way it's not so much important what's down here of course you don't want it jagged sharp but if I can start off at this ridge, it's going to be a lot better for me. So when I'm doing the layout, I'm going to think about that. So I'm kind of looking at this one. I would really like to get the year here in here. And I would like at least part of the Arizona to come in here. So I'm going to come up to this point, And then I would just trace out this out here with... Uh, a writing utensil now you want to remember if you're going to use a sharpie sharpies are permanent if you're not really sure and you want to make some adjustments you can come along 
with a pencil and do this kind of stuff. And then that way, if something changes, you can go along, but you're just basically going along the plate like so and tracing out where you are going to cut the plate like so. All right, I have gone around a couple times right there, and I can see where I want to cut the plate. So we'll get this out of the way here and put our layout up against here and see where we're going to want to cut this part out. All right, I think we have everything lined up pretty good. I kind of want to follow the curvature of the guitar a little bit, so I've got a little bit to fix right there, but I think I'm going to make this a tad bigger and bring that out to there and bring that out to there. Now, I'm going to cut this out and see how it lays out on here once I get the plate cut out as well, remembering that I made a slight alteration to this area right in here. Okay, again, as I've said in another episode, I've got a set of Malco M12s. These are the best I've ever found for cutting through license plates and other um, can type materials. I want to look very closely because I've only got one shot at this. And we want to remember, I'm going to end up trimming this part right up to that edge and grinding it off as I go. But we're simply going to go along now and cut through the license plate as I marked out. Like so, we want to be careful. Now when we get to this part and cutting this radius, I have to decide, do I really want to cut this up and ruin it or do I want to come down from here and stay outside the radius where I need to be and salvage this piece? Because hey, that's pretty cool, Grand Canyon State. I don't know how we would use that, but certainly we will. All right, now we're going to go over to the belt sander and we're going to grind off these edges, make sure there's nothing sharp, that they're all smooth. And then we are going to cut this part off right here and make sure that it's ground down. And then once that's done, we've got that nice edge that the finger will go over instead of this. We can grind it all down and then lay it out and see exactly where this is going to fit. Okay, we're back from the belt sander and I think that the original intent here was this was going to be like this. So you got a lot sticking out there. Um, I actually like the amount that's sticking out here and I can put this one at the edge and kind of follow that radius right there. I don't know if you can see that right there. That looks good. I've got a place to pin it through here. Um, the part of the plate that held to the uh, license plate frame is there and then I can just simply run a few screws in here and then I'm going to put a little bit of uh, washer rubber washer grommets or even cork paper under here to keep this up a little bit because this curves down there's a convex here and we want to make sure that this is all supported so it's not rattling around so let me get that work done and I'll show you what it looks like okay before we forget there is a scale and intonation issue to think about. The 12th fret is right here. Um, I have measured from the back of the nut to the center of the 12th fret and come up with this mark right here. Now I'm going to run from the center of the 12th fret this way and we discover that our floating bridge is going to be right here and once we center that up it's going to require that we're going to cut a little bit of that plate away right in this area. Now we're going to have to tilt this a little bit for intonation and all that kind of thing. I think I've given you an episode in the past called Scale and Intonation. It was for cigar box guitars and who knows what, but it really doesn't matter. There's a link right up there right about now. As long as you understand the need to go from the back of the nut to the 12th fret and then make sure that the same distance from the middle of the 12th fret goes to here and that there's going to be likely a little bit of a pitch right here to 
get all your strings and intonation that's good so now that we know that we're going to lay out how this is going to sit uh, with holes by marking a few dots here with our magic marker magic marker <laughs> that's old our sharpie and kind of figure out where to mount this down and again it's going to tilt up a little bit because this is concave okay i've got three spots marked off one up here i'm, I'm going to tap and i'm not going to beat on this because we have an arch top underneath here that we don't want to crack but i've got three spots there that i'm using my awl then i'll drill a hole through this big enough for the body of the screw but we'll wait to mount it to the guitar once we know everything is fine. Okay, a little trick here. Um, I have these things that are rubber grommets. You, I joked that we used to use these to run wires through our firewall to hook up our 8-track tape player in the 70s. Uh, but anyway, they work pretty good. I've got one underneath here in this license plate so the wire from the pickup doesn't rub after a while and short out but anyway you take these um, like I said here you would drill a hole um, bigger than this and you would force it in there and it would provide this protection against a bearing wire now when it comes to putting something underneath these holes and up against the body of the guitar I take a pair of dykes I take this razor and I don't do this with your fingers and then you just find the groove there and you cut through like so and you end up making two for one the bottom of it's flat and then you put that underneath the holes in your plate all right there we go we have cut two grommets in half and then we can fix those like this with the flat part towards the guitar like that and now it will be time to finally drill our holes and get everything lined up to match that radius one two three again we're going to have to consider where the floating bridge goes and that may require a notch in here at some point later Okay, now typically there's a bracket that would fit right here and it would raise us up enough like this. Um, that's great. In fact, let me show you one on this V-necked silver tone. See right there? It attaches to the side, comes up, and hold the pick guard like that. Do not covet this guitar. Oh my. It's Easter Sunday. Do not covet stuff on all days Easter Sunday. Anyway, this would float up like this. This guitar is going to get bashed around on the road. So we're going to pin it down here, here, and here. And that way, we don't ever have to worry about it. This guitar is going to see hundreds of days a year. So that's why I'm doing that. Purists, this is not for you. All right, there we go. Bridge work to do yet, some sanding to do here now. Let's talk about doing double jack assembly right here. And that's right, two jacks. One's for a piezo, one's for the pickup. 
and we are going to use another piece of license plate here. So we'll wrap this episode up by quickly showing you how to do that. Okay, real quick in terms of layout, we're going to use two pin end jacks. I like these. Uh, they never come off. Um, you basically use these holes to mount um, into the wood. This metal cutoff that we have from the license plate that we used up here is going to be the outside. We're going to pin that down in a few places. And remember, we're going to cut this part off because this edge here that's channeled is going to be a lot smoother because everything is going this way on the guitar so we'll cut that off we'll measure this off so the first thing we want to do is take the hole that's already here in the body right there and we're going to use a step bit to make that hole big enough for this pin and jack once we know where that's going to be we situate this the way we want we put this one here and then figure out how far away the other one is going to be from here. This artist uses wireless jacks so or transmitters and so you don't want them right on top of each other so you got to give them room maybe one here and one here and then it's just simply spacing it out drilling another hole in the body making sure those holes correlate with enough room for everything and then pinning this down with chick flick teal screws see you in a minute all right there we go one hole is fit to the jack like so it'll slip right in snug and then so therefore we just take and slip it through the same size hole we've drilled in the plate we can line up where the three holes go we can measure with this device here how far off the edge the jack plate is it's not going to move here and we just do the same thing here and here and pin these down with the holes i've drilled already it'll suck it in to curve the body and then once that's all in place we make a hole in the center drill those holes out put the second jack in All right, there we go. We just put screws here and here. Once everything is wired up, got to pull the wires back out through. But there it is. Okay, guys, that was not difficult. You got a pair of tin snips and a couple of license plates to cut up. And um, a belt sander really helps out. But end of the game here, we've got uh, a solution to putting the pickup we want on this. Again, this is a pickup out of a 1965 Silvertone. That's what the artist is used to. Could have put any number of pickups in here, but this one made it work, and we were able to theme uh, well. And you want to remember these extra uh, screws that go in here into the wood and all the metal serves to reinforce this, so it's going to last longer. Same thing with the pick guard. It, um, it provides a nice accent against the color, and it's functional, so you're not going to hurt yourself on this thing and it's pulled down at the edges so if we had a bracket over there it wouldn't last 10 shows the way this guy is and then finally that jack plate two jacks you'll never understand that but by putting the piece of metal on there you've got additional screws additional supports and then the screws that go through the jack inputs themselves are going to add additional strength so hey easy way to make your guitars look unique and i'm happy that means you should be happy hey give me a like and a subscribe you can find out more ways to ruin guitars on a weekly basis so click that box below check out the playlists that are popping up at the end and i'll see you soon